uh, very interesting. So <laughs> just before I had live surgery, so I will I like to summarize my method for uh, removal of uh, thoracic OIRF. So yes, yes. Help me. Okay. Like this one. So for a uh, for a safe uh, safe removal of uh, OIRF, I like to have stage. I would like yeah, briefly interact with my mess, my mess, my so major making making stage. We need several types of drills because uh, we cannot insert the punch or instrument on the in the compressed area. So drill is the uh, most important uh, surgical tools. And the same making drilling stage. Make, before the removal of ligand problem, I would like to complete the drilling stage. So the essence of drilling is very important. Cranially, the origin of ligand problem, and the bilaterally, exposure of bilateral SAP, and the caudal distal lamina, marginal distal lamina is so <coughs> margins for drillings. And, the, and then I separate the ligand problem from the bone. So this is also, I, I believe, is important because of Compression area, I believe here is a dangerous zone, dangerous zone, so you cannot put, put a punch or other things. And the important thing is uh, find the medial wall of pedicle, because uh, cold is inside of medial wall pedicle. So if you find the medial wall pedicle, you can drill very, very bravely and speed, so I call here safety zone. And uh, no, no compression zone. No compression zone is an intermediate zone. At intermediate zone, I can put the one millimeter punch or other instrument. So this is another concept for this is uh, zonings, and uh, this is this is when you when you open the dura, when you open the dura, water between water is uh, what is split the dura and the arachnoid membrane. So during the during the dura tear. Arachnoid membrane is very easy preserved, I, th I believe. So, so you can with the preservation of arachnoid membrane, you can remove, you can remove to and ossify the ligand problem. This is a video, brief video for. A okay. Usually, I start spino, my drills spino, at the spinal laminar junctions and the outside bone, out superficial bone drilling first and remove of medullary bone. This is, here is the cranial, and expose the ligand problem. Here it looks like a midline. So I'm drilling contralateral, contralateral. This is a matchstick drill ball. Expose the contralateral SAP, and looking for the medial pedicle, looking for the pedicle. When you find the pedicle, your surgery becomes safer and easy. So how can I find the, find the pedicle? Uh, medullary bone or pedicle is very impo uh, very good surgical anatomy. I mean, there are medullary bone between lamina and uh, there are medullary bone in the pedicle. So, finding medullary bone or pedicle is uh, important. This is a distal margin of lamina, lamina or distal lamina, and uh, make a pink color like this. This is a proximal margin of distal lamina. So finding SAP, if you follow the upper margin like this, you can meet, you can meet the middle wall of SAP. So from the proximal margin of this lamina, you can follow it here, and you can expose the middle wall of SAP. And then, and then we, because here is a no compression zone, so you can put a one mini punch epidural space and uh, remove it. Yeah, separate, separate the ligand problem separating problem from the bone. This is a cranial area. Cranial area here. I'm also separating from the bones. And dissections. Here is the contralateral side, in the middle area. Yes. Cranial separations. Because here is no compression area. So the most important thing is uh, any, any compression, of compression area, we only pull up, pull above. Without compression, full avoid action is the uh, most important. So, without any compression, we can remove, we can remove the ossified ligand problem. Okay. Yeah, this is a post-operative uh, fragment and, uh, and post-operative uh, key piece. I wanna, I wanna show you another, briefly show you another case. It is uh, some interesting case. This is patient is very, very severe, very, very severe calcified, calcified OLF. Uh, 
I removed, I removed the OLF to 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 and the OLF, OLF together. So this is OLF and Dura, but we can see you preserve the document the membrane here. So removal of Dura and the OLF together together and we can see the arachnoid membrane here and with the patch method we have taco seal is a kind of a stick patch so we can cover the taco seal instead of a rayodura several pieces of taco seal because the arachnoid membrane is intact so post-operative this, this patient there is no leakage of CSF so bipolar surgery to close over dura closing dura is a patch method sometimes uh, we can use a uh, vascular clip Clip, 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 and uh, patching. This is a final view of uh, patch mast. Okay. So post-operative, uh, this is a post-operative uh, MRI. So I believe, uh, I believe uh, some mast uh, staging and the separation with the uh, delayed exposure of uh, dura and the patch mast is uh, useful for the, to the, for the removal of uh, ligand problem ossification. Thanks so much. Wow, thank you very much, sir. So nicely demonstrated. I mean, it was. Professor, fantastic. The whole day was very so much uh, informative with your talks. For an old monkey like me, now he cannot learn new tricks. How much advantage does, you, does bipotal surgery have over tubular surgery? How much, how much advantage in terms of evidence over tubular? I'm using the tubular system. Should I stop and should I learn by portal? Or I should continue now with the tubular? Yeah, it just depends depend on pathology. It, for uh, interbody fusion, bipolar have an advantage for making fusion bad. But uh, bipolar surgery needs a more longer time to remove a passage joint. So, and uh, for uh, decompression surgery, uh, we can see it. Bipod we can move it, move, can close the ca camera more closely, so easily magnification. So outside the bleeding, but if you can close the camera to inside, outside the bleeding does not problem. But tubular surgery, outside the bleeding, disturb your vision. So I think, I think uh, tubular surgery, bipolar surgery is helpful. So I strongly, for, especially for the older surgeons, strongly recommend to run. How uh, much evidence you have got to prove that one should, uh, bipotal is better than tubular surgery? Is there any long-term uh, studies which show that bipotal is better? There are many comparison. Comparison is a comparison paper is a several, many, many, especially for comparison of microscopic decompression and the uniform time. But Compression of tubular is very rare, I believe. But interbody fusion, there are many, many compressions, tubular surgery and endoscope surgery. So usually, 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 endoscope surgery time, longer time. But fusion rate is uh, nearly similar. Yeah. And uh, easy for, uh, and more good advantage for preservation of normal structure. Muscles uh, and other things is uh, well, more well preserved in bipolar surgery. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Just a comment and last observation. I, I was very struck by all your experience and what you showed us in the operating room. So really congratulations for your outstanding knowledge of this interesting modification of the tubular endoscopic uh, old-fashioned approach in a new style a new feature. Uh, my only concern is the risk of CSF fistula. Yeah. And normally, according to the literature, when we have an important CSF fistula as the one that you showed us, we have to convert endoscopic into microsurgical open approach. But in uh, your beautiful experience and demonstration you gave us, few slides ago, you shown us how it's possible to seal the fistula with the taco seal. But I have some concern about the way you put the taco seal over the injured dura. As far as I understood, there was not an overlapping mm -hmm. of the entire CSF uh, fistula. And I didn't see any glue along with the patch. So 
can you better explain your technique and is it possible to have a look of the post-op MRI two or three months later on? Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, actually, yeah, I have also checked a delay the MRI, okay. Patkar, sir, I'll just uh, quickly share my experience on your question. So I was doing tubular surgery for more than 10 years and then I took up uniportal and I was taking a couple of hours to do it. My VAS scores were, there was no difference between tubular surgery and uniportal. So then I gave it up, started doing uh, tubular, but then when I saw the resurgence of uniportal, I came up, jumped again into the bandwagon and this time I persisted and the duration of surgery reduced from two hours to an hour. And that was the point when I saw good difference between the VAS scores. I don't deny that. I am asking evidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thousands so, of patients done by many people. So in our unit, we have uh, study done by my fellows. And though the numbers are not huge, they are in two digits, double digits. But still, we have now evidence that there's a difference. Also, we have good number of publications stating that they are at par or better. Yeah, any, any other question? Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor. So, no, no, one, one last, last comment. Yes, no. Professor, what is your opinion? Should one first learn open surgery and then learn bipodal? Or they should start directly with bipodal? Because there are many youngsters here. Should they first become good open surgeons and then learn bipodal surgery? So what or is the they learning should start goal? with bipodal surgery? Yeah. yeah, thank you for a wonderful question. Yeah, if uh, someone who has a lot of experience for open surgery, microscope surgery, he, he easily become wonderful bipolar surgeons. Someone who started uh, bipolar surgery firstly, I think, I think it's some problem. So learning, learning microscope surgery first, and then move to the endoscope surgery, also a good method, I think. I think that is a fantastic advice yeah, you have given to the young people, because what happens after such workshops, everybody would wants to buy a bipodal endoscope and start with bipodal surgery without having learned proper open surgery. Yeah, so very nice statement, and we appreciate it, sir. Yeah, uh, Ramesh Dodamani, have a final question, uh, please. Uh, professor, regarding the ligamentum flavum ossification in the dorsal level, where you have already compressed cord. So you use irrigation with some pressure. So is there any chance that it can cause deficits by causing more compression? Because already the cord is critically compressed. I think it's a very, very good question. Because uh, if you maintain the outflow, good outflow, if you maintain good outflow, the press, uh, you, can, you can maintain the press of average about five millimeter HG. So, uh, if you, when you maintain good outflow, compression of cord by the hydrostatic press does not matter. But some, some doctors are over, uh, blocking of outflow, but to make a good fusion, they increase the input press. They make a big problem, intracranial problem, pulmonary embolism, can see, also cause compression. So, if you have a good maintain of outflow, I believe, I will hydrostatic press on cord does not matter. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much.